الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين Join me, Zakira, Shiraz, Jafar, Dala, Zainab, and Ali during this holy month of Ramadan when we will be appearing live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with puppet shows, stories, and lots of fun times during this holy month. 
brought to you by Nasimco. It's going to be a lot of fun, so make sure you join us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nasimco, the North American Shia Itna Ashari Muslim Communities Organization, is pleased to present Mahi Ramadan lectures and programs for the entire family. Tune in for lectures for the entire family by myself, Zakira Shiroz Jafardala, on every weekday from Monday to Friday. And for lectures for ladies only by Zakira Mehjibindala on Sundays. And for the children, we have puppet shows and storytelling by myself, Zakira Shiroz Jafardala, and my puppets every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So don't forget to gather your whole family and tune in every day. Brought to you only by Nasimco. And welcome to Nasimko's final program for this month of Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm Zakira Shiroz Jafardala, and we have been together this entire holy month of Ramadan discussing various ayah from the Holy Quran where we discussed uh, success, uh, taqwa, and the virtues loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the vices hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, we are now at the home stretch and we're awaiting the sighting of the moon so that we can celebrate. And uh, that brings to mind the question, what is Eid? And has it been mentioned in the Holy Quran? And um, why are we celebrating? Are we celebrating the relief from having fasted this entire month? And we're just so happy that all this uh, effort and, um, and struggle is now over. What's the reason for celebration? Let's look at what our holy Imams uh, salam, have told us and what the Holy Quran tells us. So to begin with, Eid al-Fitr is a unique festival. It has no connection with any historical event, nor is it related to the changes of seasons or cycles of agriculture, which many other religions and uh, cultures often do. This is not a festival related in any way to any world affairs. In fact, its significance is purely spiritual. It's the day when the Muslims thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having given them the will the strength and the endurance to observe fast and obey his commandment during the holy month of Ramadan. So the joy in the celebration is in the fact that we have achieved uh, a success in pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many people wonder why we celebrate Eid at the end of Ramadan. Are we happy that it has finished? But that is not the case. For how can we be happy that such a great month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all its blessings and mercies has gone away? Um, the blessings that this holy month has had for each one of us, uh, as described by the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in his khutbah shabaniya, gives an insight into why this holy month has been truly a celebratory month throughout and that all the things that we've been doing throughout this month actually have been cause for celebration O people said the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa indeed ahead of you is a blessed month of allah a month of blessing mercy and forgiveness a month with which um, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says is the best of months uh, and its deaths, it, it, its days, and is the best of days. Its nights, the best of nights, and its hours, the best of hours. So it's the month which invites you to be the guests of Allah and invites you to be one of those near to Him. Said so the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that each breath that we take glorifies Him, and our sleep is worship, and our deeds are accepted, and our supplications are answered. Ilahi Amin. So the actual reason we celebrate Eid is for the many beautiful reasons um, that have been outlined there, not because we're glad the holy month is over. 
And lexically, when we try to understand the word Eid, it is derived from the word Aud, which is to return or to recur. Thus, we are basically recurring to something, reverting to something. In the past, when an afflicted community found relief from some difficulty, and now they had found their former prosperity and comfort. Things had come back to normal. Things were good again. That occasion was called Eid. So basically, Eid could be considered, when we look at the word return, like the word restart or refresh. We have basically finished this entire month and our sins have been forgiven, inshallah. Our, uh, our wishes have been fulfilled. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is, is, is pleased with us and has allowed us to start again. The refresh button has been pressed. We are now, alhamdulillah, truly at a time to celebrate because we get to start all over again. In Al-Islam, after the month-long fast and at the end of Hajj, the human soul returns to its pristine state of cleanliness and purity. Hence, the celebrations of Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Hajj. So when we talk about restoration of faith, let's look at the Holy Quran and understand what the word Eid has meant in the Holy Quran. And it has been mentioned, Alhamdulillah. So this is a word about returning back uh, to some sort of uh, glory of faith and, um, and, and rejuvenation. And we found, find the mention of this word Eid in Surah Maida. And there is an explanation of uh, what happened in this. Uh, the whole surah is named Surah Maida, the table spread. And it is connected to the historical event when Nabi Isa السلام, was with his disciples. And they are called the Hawarin uh, in the Holy Quran. And so Nabi Isa السلام, um, um, was talking to his disciples and they said to him, um, Is your Lord able to send down to us a banquet from the heavens, a table spread. Nabi Isa alayhi salam told them not to make such demands. If they were real believers, they wouldn't ask such questions and ask for these kinds of, um, of miracles uh, about getting food. Uh, the disciples insisted on their demand for heavenly food. And they said that this would, this is, you know, they wanted to be nourished. It was you know, special food that they wanted from the heavens. And their main reason for asking was to restore their light of faith and confirm the veracity of Nabi Isa salam's mission, that it would really, you know, feel them, make them feel rejuvenated and, and motivated and enlightened. And so Nabi Isa salam reassured of their genuine desire to believe uh, not just to be entertained, but they wanted to really feel this rejuvenation of faith. He beseeched Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, Oh Allah, send down a banquet so that it will become Eid for the first and the last of them. Prove to them that you truly can do whatever uh, you want. Uh, you are kun fayakun. Now, it would be indeed a sign from him. Uh, Nabi Isa alayhi salam said this would be a miracle and sustenance for he is the best of providers. Whoever gets this kind of food from you, O oh my Lord, he is getting the best of the best. Well, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent such a feast and a table spread and a banquet for the Muslims, uh, for, the, for the followers of Nabi Isa alayhi salam. And Nabi Isa alayhi salam called this the day of the banquet of Eid, for it was a day of success cleansing and return to the state of having faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, tradition suggests that this was a Sunday and hence the Christian's reverence for Sunday. This is what the tafsir tell us. Let us look at this beautiful uh, miracle that happened and look at the ayah of the Holy Quran, uh, Surah 5, Surah Maida, ayah 112 to 114. When this miracle is described. Thank you. 
تَأْكُلَ مِنْهَا وَتَطْمَئِنَّ قُلُوبُنَا وَتَطْمَئِنَّ قُلُوبُنَا وَنَعْلَمَ أَن قَدْ صَدَقْتَنَا وَنَكُونَ عَلَيْهَا مِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ قال عيسى ابن مريم اللهم ربنا انزل علينا مائدة من السماء تكون لنا عيدا تكون لنا عيدا لاولنا واخرنا وآية MashaAllah, uh, truly a beautiful explanation of what miracles uh, happened when these um, disciples of Nabi Isa alayhi salam were able to find a rejuvenation of their faith by seeing the miracle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to them and nourishment from the heavens, no less. So for us Muslims, we're thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the chance and strength to carry out his commands in the blessed month. We're happy that we were able to fast and pray in Ramadan and have hopefully attained taqwa, inshallah, the goal of fasting. And we're delighted to have partaken from all the gifts from the feast of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth Imam, Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam, uh, explains that this is also a day of sealing in the re repentance that inshallah we have attained uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from uh, gaining his um, pleasure. He says, Oh God, we repent to thee in our day of fast breaking, this day when we are rejoicing and breaking the fast um, and this whole period of fasting, which thou has appointed for the faithful a festival and a joy. And for the people of thy creed, a time of assembly and gathering. So we realize that this is a day to get together and to join uh, families and the entire community. Um, at this point, we have not, we're not able to do that in these days of social isolation and quarantine. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us indeed with life. And that has kept us safe so that we could do worship in this holy month. And if this was truly a sign of the end of time and a time of um, great um, difficulty upon the world, which it truly was with all the deaths and everything going on, that this gave us Muslims the opportunity to engage in worship day and night so that we could help uh, to, um, to release the world from this difficulty, from this uh, terrible illness. So uh, the fourth Imam says that um, this is a time for assembly and gathering from every misdeed we did, every ill work we sent ahead, every, every mistake and sin that we did, every evil thought we secretly con conceived, the repentance of one who does not harbor a return to sin. So here we are returning to our refreshed, rejuvenated um, restart area, uh, you know, place. And he's saying that now this is a repentance day for a person who will never return to that awful time when there was only sin and evil thoughts. And who afterwards is giving an, uh, an allegiance that he will not go back to his offense. Um, and who, uh, you know, has given an unserving, uh, unswerving repentance, uh, rid of doubt and wavering. So accept from us, be pleased with us, and fix us, fix us within it. Beautifully, th uh, we find that the greatest significance of this day of rejoicing, it lies in the fact that this is Eid al-Fitr. On this day, every Muslim is enjoined to give the needy food at the rate of the prescribed weight for every member of his household, including servants and guests who were sheltered under his roof the preceding evening. This is a day when every Muslim is giving uh, a charity. Subhanallah. Imagine all the billions of Muslims all coming together on one day prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his pleasure giving from their wealth. This is a beautiful day indeed. The message of Eid al-Fitr is that no Muslim remains hungry. So on this day, it's a day that the rich and the poor enjoy happiness of the day as the haves give fitra to the have-nots.
The fitra ensures acceptance of the fast. As Imam al-Sadiq has explained that the fasts remain suspended between the earth and the heavens until fitra is executed. And as soon as we give this fitra, the emphasis is that on the fitra is so much that the family capable of giving just one person's fitra can rotate that self same fitra among every member of that family. And so no matter how less you have, you still fulfill this obligation. So Imam is saying, all these fasts of yours that you're sending up, they will reach, but uh, you have to give this fidya, this, idol, uh, this fitra, uh, fitra, otherwise um, you, your fasts have been incomplete. Indeed, a poor man receiving charity too shall pay fitra from the sadaqat that he receives. Thus, the rejoicing on the day of Eid is to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and serve humanity. Essentially, the message that uh, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa brought with Islam. And so, do all Muslims uh, rejoice? Are we all entitled to celebrate this day of Eid? Well, the day of Eid is a day of reward, of that day of graduation where you get your degree in your hand. So, we wish for each other this dua, that this be a Mubarak day. We say, may this Eid be Mubarak. May you be blessed with this going back to a spiritual refreshment, going back to the place, pleasing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May you be blessed with the blessings that come on this day. May it be a Mubarak day for you. May you receive special blessings that this day is reserved for. So it's like the last day of our class when the teacher gives out the report card, so to speak, and not necessarily a day of rejoicing for each and every student, uh, is it? I mean, some students are really upset when they get the report card because they didn't put in the time, they didn't make the effort. So for some, it could be a day of downright disappointment and deep regret. But subhanAllah, it is such a time of great benevolence and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it is a rare person, a completely negligent and careless person indeed who would not be benefiting. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, in all essence, and this is in Nahjul Balaga, um, and it's the saying of uh, saying 427, Eid is for him whose fasts have been accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his worship has been accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, Imam says, every day in which you do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a day of Eid. So it is an Eid at the end of Mahi Ramadan, but it is possible to have Eid any time of the year because Eid, Imam Ali alayhi salam says, has defined. Eid is defined as any day that is free of rebellion against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So every day can be a day of going back going uh, and being rejuvenated um, spiritually and of doing astaghfar and having all that accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we do it with sincerity and with a conviction that we'll never do this again. Uh, Eid al-Fitr, um, the sin again, Eid al-Fitr the, uh, therefore is, is the day of success attained in the month of Ramadan. Um, it's a month of fasting, a revelation of the Holy Quran, Laylatul Qadr. These are all successful things that are part of this holy month. So each day for a believer could be a day of celebration. This entire holy month was a day of celebration every single day. Because in essence, every day in which we did not commit a sin, we, 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 we did all our wajibat, we stayed away from all the haram, Inshallah, it's actually a day of Eid for us that each day. The holy month of Ramadan is a time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so generous. And so he's looking for an excuse to bless his servant that it usually is a win-win situation for all. I mean, every effort, every intention, every step, every breath we've taken, every sleep of the obedient fasting person is rewarded with a shower of blessings from the heavens. The fourth Imam, Imam Zainul Abidin salam, has a beautiful dua when looking at that crescent moon, which heralds uh, the coming of the day of celebration. He says that this is a crescent of security from mistakes and of safety from evil deeds. That looking at this moon, it is telling me that I am secure from my sins now. It's a crescent of auspiciousness, says the fourth Imam. It contains no misfortune. It's of prosperity. It's accompanied by no adversity, of ease, 
not mixed with any difficulty. It's a day of relaxing and comfort, of good unstained by evil, a crescent of security and faith, favor and good doing, safety and submission. And he says, Ya Allah, bless us amongst the most satisfied of those over whom this crescent has risen. When we see it, we feel this relief. It's not a relief that the moon is telling us, no, no, you don't need to fast anymore. It's not a relief, that kind of relief. It's a relief that, alhamdulillah, we have been successful in pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's for the purest of those who have looked upon it. Make us those pure people. When we look at it, we're the most pure that have looked upon this moon. The most fortunate of those who have worshipped under it. Give us the success during this new month to repent. Preserve us within it from misdeeds. As we start this new moon, new month, this month, this new month, should be a place where we're preserving all that we did in the prior, prior month. Guard us therein from pursuing disobedience to you. So Eid means to go back to our faith. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us an opportunity to go back to that state of complete uh, purity. Uh, in Surah Baqarah, Ayah 185, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You shall complete the number of days and you may glorify God for his guiding you and that you may be thankful. So we are glorifying his many qualities we, uh, and, uh, you know, especially these qualities that have allowed us to be saved and to be elevated, inshallah. Uh, we're, we're thankful for his generosity, his giving us a second chance, his forgiveness, his guidance, and so much more. Imam Ali alayhi salam um, says that, you know, uh, of how in one of his sermons, he says, uh, how should you be celebrating your Eid? You should be doing it by remembering Allah. And you remember Allah and he will remember you. And we make this mistake, we use this day as such a celebration that we forget that it is also a day of continuing ibadah. It's not for just letting it all go now. Uh, and that, that person who had worked so hard to pray on time that entire month and wake up for Fajr prayer uh, and, you know, just do everything right, suddenly on that last day, gives it all up, is in the movie theater, God forbid, in the concert, uh, has taken off the hijab, you know, shaved the beard. It's all, you know, that was for that month and now we're free. Listen, it is shaitan who is released this month, not us. Uh, we are not the ones uh, who are uh, now free to do as we please because then shaitan has truly got a hold over us. This is a time to celebrate that we have been good and now we're planning to be good. And we're going to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today, the day of Eid and every day from now on and make every day a day of celebration when we are not rebelling against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Ali uh, salam said, give the fitrah of the individuals and their dependents. Use this day to love each other. And he said, remember, and this, there's a special khutbah that Imam gave on the day of Eid. He said, uh, remember your obligations that you have towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that you've had a crash course this whole month, now continue it. Keep up the good habits. Don't let it all go. And this is a good time to now um, plan to fast at least once a week um, and to just keep up that discipline, inshallah. And if we have any uh, kaza that we still have to repay, um, uh, that we should still continue and uh, you know keep fasting. Remember though, fasting on the day of Eid is haram. We are not allowed to fast. So basically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is what the fourth Imam says when he um, uh, welcomes the month of uh, Ramadan. He says, now you have made what is, um, what was halal, you've made it haram for us. In the sense that now food that we could eat in the daytime uh, and other activities that were allowed in the daytime are now not allowed. They have become haram. Now on the day of Eid, everything goes back to the to its default position. And now what uh, we were not allowed is now allowed in the sense that the halal food and everything that we were eating. And now life is back to normal, but the spirit remains quite rejuvenated. And so Imam Ali said, refrain 
refrain now from making allegations. Don't do any such thing where you bear witness that you saw somebody committing a mistake or a sin and giving false witness especially. Don't blame people for things. Uh, shun evil deeds. Abandon drinking, of course, ilahi amin, for anyone who has... Um, got this addiction of uh, of drinking and drugs this was a month that gave everyone an opportunity to give up smoking as well now stay away from it uh, stop shortchanging don't uh, take money from people and, and you know and not give them their their haq uh, steer clear of false testimony stop running away from jihad from the battlefield and this means jihad ul akbar too right for us right now alhamdulillah there is no battlefield but we must keep fighting with that nafs, which is the the greater battle. So how did the Imams celebrate? The Imams, uh, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and our Aymai uh, Tahirin Alaihi Wasallam, they encouraged Eid and they encouraged all Muslims to do so. They told them, wear good clothes, put on perfume, go to the mosque, recite the Eid prayer. Uh, they, you know, they should exchange Eid greetings, uh, visit each other, hug each other, pass the day joyfully. And we're supposed to remember the poor by taking out the fitra before Eid and by visiting the poor and also sending them gifts if we can and remembering the alive and the deceased uh, relatives and friends. So this is a day of going to the Qabrastan, to the cemetery and remembering our Marhumin. It's going to be an unusual Eid this year like it has been an unusual holy month of Ramadan, unlike any other. Um, the mosques had to be closed down all over the world. It has hurt every believer. It has made everyone long for the mosque. And we could say that this is a silver lining. Those who took going to the mosque lightly have realized what a joy it is when we go to the mosque. How sad it is when the mosques, the lights are off now, nobody can enter. Now we're realizing that we were taking for granted a ni'mah. So that's a silver lining in itself. The other thing is the mosques might have been closed. Uh, unfortunately, that was something we had to live with. However, every home became a masjid. Every home became an Imam Barga. Families that had never worshipped together were now praying together and uh, eating together, but also doing the amal together. Uh, this is an incredible thing. A home where perhaps never before people had listened to a majlis at home uh, or, or done uh, any azadari on the nights of uh, Laylatul Qadr and the uh, day of Zarbat uh, and the shahadat of Imam Ali alayhi salam and the shahadat of Bibi Khadija alayhi salam. All those days were being commemorated by family sitting together and trying to evoke this sense of spirituality within. Doing amal together as a family, another intimacy that had never happened before because we were in our mosques. So while there was great benefit in going to the mosque, there has been an incredible benefit in being at home, cooking together, enjoying the food that we hadn't uh, really uh, enjoyed together as a family for a long time, and uh, learning to spend time together as a family. What a blessing this month has been that we have been able to be together. Uh, usually we're so busy running around. Uh, now we're reciting Holy Quran together at home. Subhanallah. So God has been kind indeed. The Imam said that this was a day of doing takbir. The Holy Prophet wasallam said, give beauty to your Eid by doing takbir. And it is said that the Holy Prophet wasallam himself used to come out of his home on the day of Eid, reciting the takbir, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a loud voice. And so, um, we have to understand that it is a special day indeed. Now, what's next? How do we reflect? How do we make this truly an Eid Mubarak? Well, Eid serves three purposes. Number one, it places the obligation upon every Muslim, the obligation to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and offer him thanks. It is a day of saying shukr, thank you Allah that you helped us make it through this month. And you know, Absolutely. It is truly only the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that allow us to make it through this month. On other days when we're not fasting, when it's not Mahir Ramadan, 
uh, when someone tells us to be hang uh, hangry, yeah, hungry for a few hours, we get hangry. <laughs> exactly. It's not easy to fast, uh, you know, to be hungry for a few hours. This intermittent fasting business is not easy. Uh, but what happens in this holy month? People fast till 9.30, in some cities 10.30, 11.30. There are places in Iceland, for example, where there's only two hours to eat before it's time to fast again. And those people have literally fasted like that for years and years because of uh, this, you know, the, it being this way that Eid, I mean, uh, Mahir Ramadan has been falling in these particular months of summer. So it is an incredible thing. How do people survive? Women, men, children, elderly who are not unwell and who are able to are actually fasting. How is this happening? It is truly a time of a miracle that we are finding ourselves able to do things we never thought we could do. For example, giving away, uh, giving, um, giving up smoking during the day. Some people would die if they couldn't fast, uh, smoke during the day, and yet they're able to do that. So that's pretty amazing. The other thing that Eid has allowed us to do, and now as we look forward to the next month, is it's given us an opportunity of spiritual stock taking. And so we've been able to ponder over our strength, the way we lost our temper, we were weak in character, we you know, realized we haven't given sadqa during the year. And you know, this was a thing that was forced upon us in the sense that inspired, but also you know, so highly recommended that we realized um, we need to keep this up. So this kind of spiritual stock taking um, has really brought, uh, and you know, it might have brought an end to the month long pangs of conscience and inner struggle and continuous realization of the feebleness of our character right so this is this has been an awesome time for us to realize that the less fortunate feel hungry and this is how it feels and that uh, you know this is what happens when you give to your give in to your anger and this is how beautiful it is when you hold on to uh, uh, your 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 anger so um, in the mirror of Mahi Ramadan what were the strong points of our character? This is something for us to ponder about. Uh, how did we handle things even under the stress of fasting? We were able to do hard work. Uh, you know, we, we are amazed at, the, our, at our character that we were able to do some of the things. If we were just mindful, we were able to hold back, not get angry, not lie, not cheat, not continue a lie that we had been telling. Um, you know, under the stress of fasting, our evil character was able to stay in check, um, you know, and then when it came to the surface, we realized if shaitan is locked up, this was the enemy within. This was the nafs acting, the nafsul amara. So a man gets a chance in this holy month for self-diagnosis. And um, this is a great time to now be ready to face the year that lies ahead with renewed strength, greater understanding, universal goodwill charity, kindness, um, brotherhood, sisterhood. Um, a person has fasted to acquire piety, discipline, self-control. But now the habit of unquestioning obedience to God is cultivated in his heart and mind. He's, ex he, he's trained himself to accept the commands of God. So now it's not going to be hard, inshallah, to stay away from the uh, evil things that uh, we were doing before, inshallah. And uh, the self-restraint has given us an, an opportunity to not only be pious and have sympathy for the less fortunate, but really aspire for a purity of soul. These are the fruits of fasting, and we need to keep trying to achieve this throughout the year. Um, let us end with some beautiful uh, passages from the Sahifai Sajjadiyah, the dua of the fourth Imam, Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam, where we have learned how to recite the Holy Quran during this whole month. Uh, so many of us who do not pick up the Holy Quran have picked it up in this month because this is the month where we're supposed to recite the Holy Quran. But we're realizing we should be doing more of this during the year, inshallah. So um, he, he, he gives this dua, uh, recites this dua when he is completing the Quran. And he says, Oh God, since you have given us help to recite it and made smooth the roughness of our tongues, You've made it easy for us to recite. Through the beauty of its expression, places amongst those who observe as it should be observed. Now let us pay heed to it. Give us the tawfiq. Um, and you know, make us adhere in submission to the firm texts of its verses. And seek refuge in admitting both its ambiguous parts and the elucidations of its 
clear signs. And so with all the terrible atrocities occurring around the world, um, with the Muslims in pa and Palestine and in Iraq and Syria, Pakistan, um, Afghanistan, um, Bahrain, Kashmir, all sorts of places all over the world where our Muslims are suffering, we might feel guilty and say, how can we celebrate when there are people dying of coronavirus, people in hospital on ventilators? Um, there have been many such Eids where we have uh, experienced great, great tragedy in the Muslim world. For example, a few years ago when there was a stampede during the Hajj, did we not celebrate Eid at that time? No. We continue to celebrate Eid because Eid is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't get to decide whether we should rejoice or not. It is a reward for the person who has been obedient. But that doesn't mean that we have to be so joyful and heedless of those who are less fortunate, oppressed and needy. That's why we celebrate Eid remembering these uh, less fortunate, sending them money, food, inshallah, and as a community working to get closer, spreading awareness about all these uh, difficulties that uh, the Muslims are facing all over the world. And um, this is a time for family, to visit those that we don't visit usually, to do more silatul rahm. These, you know, five dollars we give to a child, or you know, little gifts that we give to kids, and and the, in, the, in the plates of uh, you know, tasty sweets that we make for each other, and the chocolates. This is how we spread the love and make people love each other. It's very important to also do the Eid prayers. In, unfortunately, this year it's not going to happen, but. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us hope that there will be many more inshallah in the future. But it's important to remember that the Eid prayer is like a press conference, an annual press conference. It's a time for all Muslims to congregate together, much like how the Juma Salah is. And we reacquaint re with each other. We hear a thought-provoking khutbah and a sermon from the Imam who leads the prayer. It's a dress rehearsal. And then, if you will, to prepare for the coming of Imam Zamana. Ajalallahu ta'ala farajahum sharif. And that is why it is highly recommended to recite Dua Nudba to remember that we also have to be praying for our Imam to return. Uh, Imam Muhammad Bakir salam, says that in the when kunut of Salatul Layl, there is a special dua that is especially written by him about the sadness that accompanies us on the Eid day. The sadness when we remember that the rights of the Ahlul Bayt salam, have been taken and violated. And for us who are right now uh, imagining Jannatul Baqi and the desecrated graves of Bibi Fatima Tul Zahra Salamullah Alaiha and and all the uh, masumin that are buried there and all the Ahlul Bayt salam, that are buried there and the companions that are buried there. And those are not only destroyed graves, but graves that we are unable to visit freely. And so this is a time to especially pray for the giving back of the haq of these broken um, places of, uh, of burial. We pray for these to be, re uh, uh, you know, to be rebuilt and for our Imam to come, Ajalallahu ta'ala farajahum sharif, so that that can happen. The prayer that we're doing on the day of Eid is a time for us to remember that we are subhanallah and ummah. And when we look around and we see the thousands of people praying and the, the scenes at the Holy Kaaba of the people doing their, um, their sajda, it is sad that we won't get to see that um, with... Um, with the coronavirus and the social isolation and quarantine. But Alhamdulillah, we will continue to do the sajdas and we will wait until the day comes when the doors will open and we can all enter this place. And as we see this holy place and as we see this uh, month um, slipping from our hands and, and, and going so fast and how often we say this to each other, at the beginning where we say it's looming in front of us this entire month. By the end of this month we say, how did those days go by so fast? They just went very, very quickly. Truly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps us. But also, uh, it is a time for us to feel in love with this month. And the fourth Imam has a beautiful dua where he says, Salam, O month. And every, eye, uh, every uh, you know, stanza of this dua is about salam, O month of Ramadan, salam, that we say goodbye to you. 
but with love. And he says, how much did we long for thee yesterday? And how intense will be our eagerness for you tomorrow? We look forward to seeing you again, O holy month. Peace be on thee and thy excellence of which we have been deprived now. This month is gone now and your blessings which will no longer be with us. These special blessings of the thousand months in one night, the Laylatul Qadr, the, months, the, the month where everything we do gets amplified so much. Every action, every good intention. And the fourth Imam says, we're not happy you're leaving, O blessed month. And verily, this month of Ramadan stayed amongst us a, a welcome stay and gave us righteous company. It gave us the company, a beautiful company, bestowing upon us the most excellent benefits in the universe. Now it departs from us at the completion of its time. Therefore, we bid it farewell as we did goodbye to one on whose departure is hard upon us. We're saying goodbye to you not as a relief, oh, you're gone, thank God. No, we're saying, oh, month of Ramadan, we will miss you. And as you leave us, it's sad. We say goodbye to you as a person who says goodbye to a best friend whose departure is hard upon us and makes us sad and whose parting away makes us feel lonely. Indeed, uh, when the month of Ramadan ends uh, and when the mosques were open, we feel that. We say, oh, everything's going to close down now. We won't be coming. We won't be meeting each other like this. How many friendships got strengthened as we sat together and broke bread together and shared beautiful food that we had brought from home and recited together, prayed together, taught each other the Holy Quran, learned beautiful things from the lectures, all those things that we did sitting together. It's been difficult, but Alhamdulillah, we have been able to do it online. And we thank Nasimko for making this possible, for investing so much time, effort, and money, and opportunity, and, and to have scholars come and to have puppet shows for the children. Uh, all these wonderful things that have happened is because we have organizations like Nasimco and other organizations all around the world that have made these kinds of events happen in every place imaginable. I mean, there was so, so much an, of an opportunity to listen to lectures and to hear from the top reciters from around the world online. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this opportunity. And we also pray that such organizations continue to remain funded so that amazing things like this can continue to happen. Charitable efforts are important as well. These kinds of tabligh efforts are also very important. Therefore, please, as you consider different places to give charity to, remember to also donate to organizations like Nasimco and other organizations around the world like these that do important things for people to learn and to worship together. So in the words of the fourth Imam, Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam, so we, bid, so we bid farewell to it with the farewell of one whose parting pains us, whose leaving fills us with gloom and loneliness, and to whom we have come to owe a safeguarded claim. We felt very safe in this month from your wrath, O Allah, from our own sins, from our nafs. Um, we say, peace be upon thee, O greatest month of God, O festival of his friends. Peace be upon thee, O most uh, noble of accompanying times, O best of months and days and hours. Peace be upon the month in which expectations came near and good works are all scattered about. We were able to pick and take every gem and what seemed impossible forgiveness and acceptance of our most wildest hajat suddenly felt like it was very possible to ask. Peace be upon thee, comrade, who is great in worth when found and who torments through absence when lost. Anticipated friend whose parting gives pain. Peace be upon thee, familiar, who brought comfort in coming, thus making happy, who left loneliness in going, thus giving anguish. Peace be upon thee, neighbor, in whom hearts became tender and sins became few. Peace be upon thee, O month of Ramadan, helper who aided against shaitan, companion who made easy the paths of good doing. Peace be upon you, how many became freedmen of God within thee. 
How happy those who observe the respect due to thee. Peace be upon thee, how many the sins you erased, how many the kinds of faults you covered over. How drawn out were thee for the sinners. How awesome were you in the hearts of the faithful. Peace be upon thee, month with which no days compete. Peace be upon thee, month which is peace in all affairs. Peace be upon thee, thou whose companionship is not disliked, thou whose friendly mixing is not blamed. Just as thou hast entered upon us with blessings and cleansed us of the defilement of offenses, thou art not bid farewell in annoyance, nor is thy fasting left in weariness. And we say goodbye to this holy month and anticipate a new month where we can inshallah be better human beings and the fourth imam says to that crescent as he sees that tiny little sliver of the new moon he says oh god bless muhammad and his household and wipe out our sins along with the wiping out of this crescent moon as it gets smaller and smaller just like this mo this moon gets smaller until there's only a sliver and then it's a new moon make us pass forth from the ill effects of our acts with the passing of its days of this month until it leaves us behind while when, within it thou purifies us of offenses and rids us of evil deeds and that was from supplication 44 when welcoming the month of holy ramadan we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us life so that we can live to see another year uh, another month of Ramadan and inshallah in that month inshallah we will all be safe from this disease uh, this illness this virus and our mosques the doors will be flung open let's remember how we felt on this day when we re realized we would not have a place to do our Eid prayer we will not be able to meet each other we won't be able to visit relatives let's remember this so that on the days when we are able to do this that we don't take it for granted and that we make the most of those opportunities to say love you to our loved ones, to say thank you to those who have given so much to us and to say Alhamdulillah and Allahu Akbar when our mosques are available for us for Salah and for all sorts of worship. Thank you so much for joining us this entire holy month of Ramadan. We thank Nasimko for making this all possible. We thank you all. Without your viewership, this would be a lonely event uh, uh, totally. So thank you for being there for us. Thank you to all the reciters, uh, to uh, Zakira Majibin Dala, who joined us on Sundays, Zakira Shiraz Jaffer Dala, who was here from Monday to Friday, and for all the puppet shows that we saw on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And thank you to all of you for your feedback, for your love, and your kindness, and your donations. And with that, Eid Mubarak to all of you and God bless you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة الزهراء سيدة النساء العالمين السلام عليك وعلى جدك وأبيك وعلى أمك وأخيك السلام عليك وعلى التسعة المعصومين من ذريتك السلام عليك يا صاحب العصر والزمان السلام عليك يا خليفة الرحمن ويا إمام الإنس والجان عجل الله تعالى فرجك وسهل الله تعالى محرجك وجعلنا من أنصارك وعوانك 
ورحمة الله وبركاته